Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Australian jazz bassist Lloyd Swanton. We caught up with him in early April 2020 to talk about the pandemic world of no live jazz and so many other things, like his long association with the band that he co-founded, the jazz trio, The Next. He loves music. He has great tales to tell. Enjoy. Let's just kind of get away from all this for a minute and talk about some jazz. That is that is lovely and particularly uh, appropriate in uh, our case because our US tour got postponed. So I'm very wistfully thinking of where I might be right now. Yeah. Um, if, if I was actually still still performing, and I think it would be Chicago right now. But anyway. Wow. Um, this this is absolutely a, a a nice alternative. So thank you. Good. Yeah. You bet. In fact, at any rate. Yeah. So. Thanks for taking a minute out, and I just want to start off with your your latest CD with the next called Three. Talk to me a little bit about this recording. Well, it's our twenty first album, um, which sounds like a lot, but we have been going for I think thirty three years now, so um, we're not overworking ourselves. Um, and people who are familiar with our work know that one thing we do is quite long pieces. Um, we we believe that the way we want to make music, you need a certain amount of time to toss some ideas around, get something up in the air, fly it around and bring it back down. And it seems to usually clock in around about the one hour mark. So most of our albums, um, which we started releasing albums around about the advent of the CD, which was tailor-made for us, we most of our albums um, clock in at about the one hour mark. but. On this album, we decided to hark back to one of our quite popular albums from, uh, I think, 2006, called uh, Chemist, where we released three tracks of about 20 minutes each, and for no particular reason, we just thought, let's revisit that format. The the album is called Three, to reflect the three tracks, and to reflect the fact that it's a trio, and there's probably, I guess, maybe the three decades we've been going as well, so, um, but that was... That was just um, an appropriate title that we found afterwards. So it was it was simply just a decision we made in the in the recording studio on the first day, and that's what we pursued. So, what's been kind of the key to the longevity of the band? You've been around for a long time. How how has this? Um, talk to me a little bit about your longevity. Yeah. Look. Um, of course, it's all in hindsight. There was, um, and, and I, I, there's a few elements. The first. Um, is that I think one thing that sets us apart from just about any other band I've ever heard of was that we started the band um, with the quite adamant insistence that we were never going to perform in public, which <laughs> which does set us apart from most other bands. We, we had a concept we wanted to explore and part of that concept was about having no outside pressure whatsoever and we love playing to audiences but we we thought that we wanted a kind of a hothouse environment where where the music could be protected from outside elements. So in 1986, 1987, I can't even remember exactly now, we got together and workshopped quite intensively for about six months and all through that period had no intention of ever going live. As it turned out, we, we have been able to avail ourselves of... Um, of a rehearsal room in the music department of the University of Sydney and some of the um, administrative staff had heard us workshopping and one day sent a message saying we've got a concert series coming along, would you like to be part of it? And we, we had big philosophical discussions about it but decided we should at least try it in front of an audience. And here we are 33 years later touring the world. It, it, so that, that for starters meant that from the word go we weren't trying to crack it big time. We were totally focused on the music and we've never lost that focus. And another thing was, I think, just the, the patience required to make the music uh, possibly filtered through into our approach to everything in life. There's a sort of fatalism. Um, we try to grab opportunities when they um, happen to land in our laps, but we don't go chasing anything. We're, we're very, very fatalistic about that. And that's kind of the same as the music that if, if you try to push things in any particular direction, the buoyancy goes away and it all collapses. So you just got to wait for it to come on. And then finally, I think just as, as three individuals, we've learned to give each other space. We're we're all we would all happily describe 
each other as best friends, um, but to use another cliche, I've fallen back on a couple of times, that doesn't mean that we're all taking selfies and pulling fish mouths. Every time we give each other a whole lot of space, and quite often when we're on tour, if we're not performing on stage, the only time we really communicate is a, you know, a message around about seven o'clock at night, who's up for dinner, and we might all go out to find a restaurant and eat dinner. And we we respect each other's space, and I think that's really paid off. You know, now that we're kind of in the middle of this pandemic, and you know, there's uncertainty. You know, when the music starts back up. What do you? What revelations do you hope both musician and audience member get from this time when we do return to a live venue? Speaking, uh, speaking in general terms, I think there's just going to be such a pent up outpouring of of you know, just everyone's just going to want to get out and hear music and play music, and so it is. It is something to really look forward to, um, and I'm I'll be there in the front row. <laughs> um, in terms of our own music, there won't be any. It'll be business as usual. You know, we, we locked this uh, we locked this concept in 33 years ago, and it's stood the test of time till now. And uh, it maybe sounds a bit flippant, but no bar going to um, change anything about the way we make our music. It's 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 locked in, and we're just busting to get back and, and do it. That's 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 the takeaway here. Hey, man, thank you for taking a little bit of time to talk about the band, the new album, and a little bit about what's going on in the world. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in Australia, America, and spots all over the world, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to Lloyd for his time, music, and stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com. And for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, support the arts and enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.